synthesizer that I built using a field programmable data array, which is basically it's a chip that has a sea of sea of logic on it that you can connect up just about any way you want. And the prices of those things have been falling over the years as their sizes have been going up. The one that's on the particular board that I have has uh, one million gates in it, wow. which is kind of when you think about it, I don't know how many of you have TTL chips at home, but you probably just about, if you took your bedroom and filled it completely to the ceiling, it would probably be about a million chips. Hmm. So it's, um, it's really kind of amazing what you can do with it. Now, unfortunately, the, um, the, MIDI, the MIDI interface that I did only seems to work with my keyboard at home. I haven't been able to find a keyboard here yet that it'll actually work with. The notes will turn on, they just won't turn off. <laughs> so, what's happening? What's wrong with that? Yeah, what's wrong with that? Fortunately, the, um, the debugging interface, which I do over an RS-232 port, you know, does work. I can't play music, but at least I can activate the uh, oscillators and stuff. <coughs> right now, this thing has 512 sawtooth oscillators in it. It also has 512 ADSR generators in it. <coughs> and it also has 512 uh, equivalent of a voltage controlled amplifier. And all of those run into a, in, into a mixer so they come out you know, in, in one channel. And that all gets routed into a, um, into a stereo um, delta sigma D to A converter, pretty much like the one that you, you'd have in a you know, in a home computer, and then it goes out, you know, makes audio. So, I can activate one of the oscillators here. back in August and probably about 75% of the time was not actually right you know doing code for the uh, synthesizer itself but was doing code for actually debugging it. Um, I only finally got the thing running only about just about oh, less than two weeks ago. So uh -huh. One of the debug tools I have is sort of like a log, well, it is a logic analyzer where I can actually have it record, well, I have it recording the output of the mixer, so, you know, so I can check to make sure that the waveforms I'm getting out of it are, you know, what I expect. And I also have another interface. Hey Jim. Yes. You you flew up here, right? Pardon? You flew up here. Yes, right? I did. You took that on the plane? No, I. Oh. I, 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 <laughs> I was wondering if you got the TSA. Well, since I actually do, I've actually done work with TSA, so uh, I kind of know how dumb they are. I knew <laughs> ahead of time that. Yeah. Unless I, you know, wanted to have my uh, suitcase blown apart by a, you know. By another bomb. Right, right, it was right. Best to, you know, UPS it up here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, um, that that's kind of, since I also flew up here, that was the reason. I, I wish I could have brought my keyboard, but oh well. The, um, 
I also have another you know debug tool where I can actually single step through the thing, so I can actually you know tell it to do just you know one sample, and then I can look at the outputs of all the various things and registers and you know see what their values are. So that was probably what I spent most of the time doing is you know writing the debug tools, and then I could actually try the real hardware. And it's quite often was okay. Well, I got to make more debug tools now. So. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, in the end, it, it all, um, it all, you know, at least the part that I have done, it all worked. And the next step is, in fact, I don't know, you probably can't see it, but I have a, a section down here for filters. Now, without filters, of course, it's probably not, you know, too terribly useful. But I'm planning on doing a four-pole digital filter, you know, that has resonance, so it'll be. Similar in operation to like you know SSM twenty forty. So you know that's 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 where the plans are. Hopefully within the next month or so I'll be able to get that digital filler right. The um, the hardest thing to deal with are the I guess you could say is the pipeline delays because each module takes you know one clock cycle to do. And so the you know the next module that's going to be operating on that you got to make sure that you know it's delayed in time. So by the time you get you know to the end, it's you know several clock cycles down the line. And plus all you know the whole thing is you know all of this each sample is done in 512 clock cycles. And then I start over on the next one, you know, doing the next one. So it's it was not an easy task to get to all this. To play together as, as, as you hear it right now. And, uh, but it, it, is, it is rather, oh, and the, some of you may ask, why 512? Well, as it turns out, the, the, uh, the Xilinx data array has a, what's called a dual port block RAM, and those are 512 words by 32 bits. So that's where the, that's where the 512 oscillators came from. Well, that was sort of like, that's what it will do. So I made it do that. So that's all the uh, the plans for this is hopefully eventually I'm gonna make a you know PC board that'll have the you know the components on it that you actually need in order to do this. Mm -hmm. And the um, the code for this is gonna be all open sourced. In fact, you can download what I have running here right now off the internet. I was kind of hoping to use their Wi-Fi here to get to my web page, but they hmm. they do have it blocked unless you have an account. So, yeah. Listen, John, do you know the uh, password? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately. So anyway, that's that's pretty much where it stands right now.